All right, let's see it. Yep. Oh no, that's good. Uh, hold it. Yep, that's good. Uh, the chin, chin out. Yeah, a little bit. Yep, the, oh, perfect. You got it. Right. Yeah, that's good. No, perfect. Hold it right there. Oh no, turn a just a little bit. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, it's 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 good, but but I need more. Just a little more. Okay. No, less. Right there. You got it. All right. You want to do you want to do some uh, without uh, without paint? But uh. I'll do some bare, bare plastic. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with it if you're okay with it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, whoa, this is, you are going places. This is hot. A little bit more, a little more out. I need more, yep, right there. You got it. Perfect, perfect. Nice, very nice. Hey, welcome to Prop Culture, your look into the world of replica prop and costume making. I'm your host, Bill Duran, and today we are talking about photography. That's right, photography. You might be thinking, but Bill, I want to make props, I want to make costumes. Why is photography so important? Well, I'm going to tell you. A little piece of me dies every time I see someone build something that is truly amazing and put weeks and weeks of effort into something and then taking a picture in the dark corner of a Calcutta slum. So my goal today is to give you a couple of pointers so that you are well prepared to take excellent photos of your hard work. The first thing you can do is just go ahead and hire or convince a photographer friend to take photos for you. Um, right now, the cosplay photographers are all over the place and there are some that are supremely talented and will take pictures of you when you're at a convention. Just recently, I was at PAX East, and my friend Sonia from Soulfire Photography took some really cool photos of me in my costume, and they definitely turned out better than anything that I could have taken myself. So I highly recommend, if you have the opportunity to have someone else who is a professional and good at taking photos, take a picture of your prop or costume work that you go for it. Now, barring that, let's say you uh, don't have anyone around to take pictures of you and you want to take pictures of your work by yourself. Well, I've got you covered. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use my iPhone, this guy right here, with this fancy new case I just got. Uh, I also have cameras like this uh, Panasonic LX5, which is a very nice point-and-shoot camera. And I also have my DSLR, but I realize that most people don't have fancy pants cameras and probably have a camera phone. So I'll take all my pictures of the camera phone to prove to you that you don't need a fancy camera to get good photos. The first thing you can do to make your photos of your work stand out from everyone else's is to change the setting. Now for your, let's say, work in progress photos, you might just take a picture of your prop laying on the bench and that's fine. But for your final photos where you really want to show it off, you can change the background, you can go to a remote location. Uh, here's an example. These are some insulation sheet plastic thingies. Uh, look at that. These are about two bucks a pop, so I grabbed ten of these to use for my Kerrigan rifle photo shoot. And I just duct taped them up on the wall. Uh, actually it was a garage door. And bam! Suddenly, when you can't tell what the backdrop is supposed to be, it could be anything, some sort of sci-fi hangar bay or whatever it is. What's important is that people don't identify the background and they focus on the work that's in front of it. For me personally, I've got a really dingy wall over there in my shop that looks like maybe it's got a little water damage. Yeah. Uh, it is worrying for my shop, but it makes a really great backdrop, so I will often shoot in front of that and it looks really cool. The next and most important thing you can do for your photos is to have a lot of light. The easiest way, of course, is to just go outside. Uh, the sun will provide you with all kinds of light, way more than you need. And even on a cloudy day in Seattle, you can still get some really, really cool photos just by taking your work outside and snapping a few photos in front of a nondescript wall. If you have something more formal set up that you want to do and it's going to be indoors, then you're going to have to get yourself some lights. Ta-da! 
These are just can lights that you can get from the hardware store and they're like five to 10 bucks a pop. You might be able to find them cheaper elsewhere if you look around. Uh, I have like six of these in my shop that I just use anyway and when it's time to take photos or video, I'll grab them and I'll clamp them onto things. And I have bulbs. We have your compact fluorescent bulbs. These tend to be a little colder if you want that look. And these are just the normal incandescent bulbs. Um, and I do believe I got all of these from the hardware store. So we're talking for like 20 or 30 bucks, you'll have a whole lighting setup. You'll have everything you'll need. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna be using this subject. Yeah. This is a kit that I got from my pal Harrison at Vulpin Props. This is the N7 Valkyrie rifle. And uh, I assembled the kit myself and painted it up. And I figured it would be a nice subject for our photo adventures. So here's the first shot. This is in my bedroom on the floor in the dark and it looks terrible. You can barely see the object and you can tell it is on the floor of a dirty bedroom. For the second shot you can see I've moved to a new location. I've got it sitting on top of a plastic bin and the backdrop is some of those insulation plastic thingies. This is just with room lights, so there isn't a light directed right at the subject, uh, and it's obviously not enough light. You can see there was some camera shake, and it looks kind of crummy. This shot is with just one of those can lights and an incandescent bulb pointed at it. Now you can start to see that uh, a little more detail is coming out of the gun, but still not great. Here we go with two lights. Uh, much better, obviously, and if you only have two lights, then this will probably do. But uh, while it is still getting better, what happens if we add four lights? This shot has four lights in it, and a couple of them are pointing at the gun from behind. Not only does this fill the whole photo with all kinds of light, but also it gives sort of a nice rim effect to the edge of the top of the gun. For a shot for my iPhone, that is pretty darn good. Got four lights on it. I would feel pretty good posting this online. The other thing you can do is take some close-up shots of some of the areas that you are most proud of. What I like to do is take a whole bunch of shots and then pick a couple that are my favorite and post just those ones online. Finally, here's a comparison shot between my finished photo taken with my phone and that same photo taken with the DSLR. While the DSLR photo is clearly better, it's got a little more dynamic range and a little bit better uh, depth of field going on, you can still tell that the camera phone shot is pretty darn good. So, you have no more excuses. Go start taking some really good photos. Hopefully these tips are going to help you out and I hope that I see a lot of really good photos that you guys are taking of your work. Please share your work with me. I would be happy to help out if you have any questions about your photography. And please share this video. Uh, I'm getting a lot of good responses on YouTube and talking back and forth with people in the comments and I'd like to make that happen some more. So share this video, tweet me at Chinbeard and check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash punish props. Uh, until the next video, go take some good pictures. See you guys.